Good morning, everybody. Just want to take a moment and lift up my nephew, Quentin. He actually has surgery on tomorrow, so I will mention it again tomorrow because you can never have too much prayer. Um, but I definitely want to lift him up. And I also want to give a shout out to my nephews, my children, and my brother. Um, we include my, or I include my brother because he's their age. Um, I just thank you all for being the men that you are, um, for being the young men that you are, for just doing what you do. Um, I just love you all. But going real quick back to Quentin, um, I guess I won't go back to Quentin. We'll go ahead and pray. But I ask that you all lift him up in your own prayers. Again, he has surgery tomorrow. Heavenly Father, come to you, thanking you and praising you for who you are, Lord God. Thank you for this day, Lord God. Another day, Father, that we have not seen, but you've seen it all, Lord God. You know what the day will bring at the end, Lord God. And I just want to thank you and praise you, Father, regardless of what it is, Lord God, because we know that you are in control, Father. Again, we should never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God, Father. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that as I uh, decrease, Lord God, that your words within me would increase, your Holy Spirit would teach this lesson, Lord God, that the words that come out of my lips, Lord God, would be acceptable unto you, Father. And I just ask, Lord God, that you would just be with me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and we are going to read verses 41 through 50 in hopes of getting through at least half of them. Um, but there are some other scriptures that we'll be reading, so I don't know how to go. Let's go ahead and start at verse 41 of Acts chapter 7. Okay, so Acts chapter 7, verse 41. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your God Remphon, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? All right. So um, again, this is Stephen explaining unto the council how Christianity came to be. And um, we left off with them making idols, um, with Moses being the one that is the overseer, basically, Aaron being his mouthpiece. And we're talking about the children in the wilderness. All right. So verse 40, 41 says, and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. And I actually want to go over to Psalms 115 verses four through eight, because anything that we have to make, we cannot consider it a God because it can only be as smart as we are. And I'm sorry, I need my God to be more powerful and definitely a whole lot smarter than me. All right, this is what the Bible says about this. Psalm 115 verse four. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusts in them. All right. 
God is saying, look, y'all creating these idols. They can't do jack for y'all. They are dumb, literally blind, mute, everything else. And so are the people who are trusting in them. Okay. Don't be one of those people. Let's go ahead and go to verse 42. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? All right. So want to make an, an announcement. God is always with you if you have accepted his son, Jesus Christ. All right. He is always with you until you decide that you don't want him with you anymore. OK, when you accept his son, Jesus Christ, just like we've talked about in Acts, you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. But there can come a point where you grieve the Holy Spirit so much that it's like, you know what? I'm not talking to you anymore because the things that I say to you, you don't listen. All right. So if we go ahead and go to Romans verse uh, chapter one. OK, Romans chapter one, verses 18 through 32. This is where some of the reading is going to come in. So just um, hang with me for a moment. All right. When um, Acts talked about then God turned, it literally meant. He was like, you know what, turned his back. But we know God doesn't have human characteristics, right? But we have, or the Bible used human characteristics. They call it anthropomorphism um, when they describe God as having hands and a heart and all of that because they're trying to make it as to where you can comprehend because we can't comprehend God, okay? And so the writers are trying to make it as to where you understand. So it's talking about God, you know, it's like, okay, you want to do it, you go ahead and do it. Uh, I'm going the other way. And so Romans chapter one, verse 18, um, 18 through 32, actually, let's go ahead. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath shown, showed it unto them. All right. So he's not talking about those that don't know. He's talking about the ones that God has manifest his righteousness unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. All right. God is showing you all around that he exists. All right. So he's saying they're without excuse because that when they knew God, they knew God, all right? They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened, all right? We're not talking about people who didn't know God. They knew him, but they just started suppressing things, all right? It's just like when you think that you get away with something, then you go ahead and either you keep doing that thing or you try something else. Right. And so the Holy Spirit is like, dude, don't ask me to speak to you because you're not even listening to the things that I am saying. All right. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. All right. I've done that so many times. Hopefully those days are behind me, though. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That's what we just read about, all right? Um, wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men, with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful men, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. All right. So God right here is saying, hey, you want to go ahead and you want to keep doing that thing. I'm going to go ahead and let you. All right. Um, and so it's not talking about those that find themselves occasionally in this sin. It's talking about the ones that have pleasure in doing it. All right. Gossipers, backbiters, all of those are included. Let's go ahead and keep going on to um, verse 43. want to make sure that there's nothing else in 42. We'll read that again, though. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven at his is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. He's basically saying, don't you remember that that trip y'all took? It was only supposed to take a couple of uh, weeks, but yet it took y'all 40 days because of disobedience. Don't you remember that? Do you want to go back through that again? 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your God, Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. All right. This um, tabernacle of Molech, this is deep. This is rough. Um, studying about Molech, it was a God that they made. And um, the head of it was an animal. I forget what the body of it was, but it had arms. And they would heat this figure up. Um, they would heat it up extremely hot. And then they would place their babies in the arms of this God. And to drown out the screams of the babies, they would beat drums real loud so that they don't have to hear their own children screaming as they died a slow death. Okay. Um, if your God is telling you to do something like that, that is not our creator. Okay. Um, and then this star of your God, Ramphon, it is interesting because the star of David it looks exactly like that. It just has some other things within it. So just be careful, you know, when you go and you purchase things. Um, years ago, I used to have this cross and it had Jesus on it. And this one person came up to me and he was like, you know, Jesus rose, right? Why you still got him hanging on the cross? And I'm like, oh, wow, that is deep, right? So you might have what you think is the star of David, but it's actually the star of your God, Remphon. So definitely do some work before you um, purchase these things, all right? The figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. All right, whose house? God's house, right? They were in the promised land, and God is like, you ain't going to do all this stuff in my house. Come on, y'all. Y'all parents, y'all are the same way. You ain't going to be smoking and drinking and partying and fornicating and cussing and all this stuff in my house. All right. I'm the one that pay the rent. I'm the one that does the upkeep, cut the grass, all that stuff, pay the bills. You ain't going to be doing it in my house. And so it's the same thing here. I know sometimes it's hard to digest things in the Bible. But come on, put yourself in the same position. God is like, this is the land flowing with milk and honey. You're not going to be worshiping other gods. I told y'all back before y'all even came into the land, have no other gods before me, right? I'm a jealous God, all right? And so it's the same thing. It's, okay, be the man of the house. You're the man of the house. What if your woman brought a dude in there that she was messing with? you would flip a lid. It's the same thing. God is the one that has provided them this land. 
They took this land from the Canaanites with no problems, right? And now God has to compete with an idol. Come on, y'all. Think about it. Y'all would be the same way. All right. So he says, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. We'll go ahead and we will pick up with verse 44 on tomorrow. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. We thank you that you are just God, Father. You have all of the facts, Lord God. We see things, Lord God, dimly. One day we will see them clearly, Lord God. But right now, we only know bits and pieces and parts, Lord God. Even with the things that we do ourselves, Lord God, we don't always know what we do. Hence the reason that Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. We don't understand the way that you understand, Father. So please, Lord God, continue to extend us your grace and your mercy, Father. And we'll be ever so careful to give your name the praise. Lord God, just thank you and praise you again. In case my nephew's um, surgery starts before I log on tomorrow, Father, I just ask that you would just keep him, Lord God. Guide the hands of the doctors, Lord God. Be with the nurses, Lord God. Be with his mom, Wynette, Father. Please make it as to where she doesn't worry, Lord God. But she begins to, Lord God, to just place all of her trust in you, Lord God. And to know, Lord God, that you will be right here right there with him in the operating room, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later. <clears throat>